Let's start with sojourners. The reason I'm talking about sojourner students and sons is because there's a lot of apostles, or we might say apostolic leaders, that have broken hearts. And one of the reasons why they have broken hearts is because they've never discerned the difference between sojourners, students, and sons. I think it's healthy and I think it's very good for you to classify all of your followers in one of those three categories, sojourners, students, and sons. You're going to have the most in your category of sojourners. These are people who travel with you. These are people who journey with you. These are people who are with you now, but make no mistake, they can exit off at any time. And where we get hurt as leaders, especially if you're an apostolic leader that has, remember the two traits, remember General Patton and uh, uh, Michael Brady, <clears throat> generals and fathers. If you have a real fatherly heart, you get your heart broken if you're trying to parent sojourners. Because a sojourner is a person that's with you for a while, but then they'll exit off at any time. They are here to travel with you. They are here to they are here to be with you for a while, maybe support the vision for a while, and then they're going to be gone. And the problem is you're more committed to their success than they are. A sure recipe for frustration is when you're committed more to someone's success than they are for themselves. It'll always lead to your frustration. Sojourners are people that are going to travel with you for a while, but they're not really there to be part of the family. They're really not there to, to really have their lives changed. Listen, they're there to have the scenery change. A sojourner is like a traveler. They're like a vacationer. You know, they'll drive along and it's kind of nice to look at the scenery, but when they get tired and they want to do something else, boom, they're gone. Students are a little different. Sons are a lot different, but these sojourners are people they're really not interested in, in being part of the family or learning from you and getting a part of you. They just like to journey with you. Uh, <clears throat> imagine yourself driving a bus, and they like the bus. It's comfortable. It's got a TV. It's air conditioning. They're on the bus. They'll travel for a while. But they, you, when you come to a bus stop, they're out the back door, especially if they find a convenient time. So we got to know who the sojourners are. And when you know that a sojourner is a sojourner, they're on, they're off, they're with you, they're gone. That's fine. That's fine. Again, the reason we get hurt is because we open up our heart. We think they want to be a son. No, they're just going to ride the bus for a while and then leave you. And what happens is, <clears throat> this happens to a lot of leaders, they get hurt so many times that they close off their hearts and they just keep everybody at bay. I hope that hasn't happened to you, but I can tell you this. If you are fully commissioned and operating an apostolic ministry, I, I jokingly said one time, it's about half joke, really. <clears throat> I said, probably the number one fruit of an apostle is betrayal. The, the number one, how do you know if you're an apostle? Well, if you've been betrayed, if you've been sold out, if you've been stabbed in the back enough times, probably the apostolic anointing is coming out of those wounds. And I'm reminded of the uh, Samaritan, good, good Samaritan. He poured in the wounds oil and wine. And what you'll find is apostolic oil, the anointing, and apostolic wine of revelation comes from your wounds. And a lot of those wounds <clears throat> are very, very painful. And they cause a lot of apostolic leaders to kind of close up. That's a shame. And, and, but here's the thing. Sometimes we only have ourselves to blame because we've not discerned sojourners from sons. Sojourners are with you for a while, and uh, but then they're gone. So what do you give a sojourner? Well, here's what you do. You give a sojourner <coughs> your hands. Give a sojourner your hands. Give them a helping hand. Uh, so, sometimes you give them a hand, that's okay. And uh, sometimes you give them a hand on the bus. Sometimes you give them a hand off the bus, but you give them your hand. And the reason is because calloused hands are no problem, but a calloused heart is. And when you give sojourners your heart and they disappoint you, it's going to create a wound which then becomes calloused. 
And when you give them your heart and they wound your heart, you have a calloused heart. When you give them your hands and they wound your hands, you get a calloused hands. But hey, calloused hands aren't all that bad. You have to discern God brings some people into your life to be sojourners. I'm not saying they're bad people. They may be somebody else's son, but to you, they're a sojourner. And you've got to understand sojourners. Jesus, you understand Jesus had the 12. Among the 12, he had three, Peter, James, and John. He had other disciples outside the 12, like when he sent out the 70. And then he had those that followed him in the crowd. So there were different relationships that Jesus had with different people. He gave them different things based on what they wanted from him. And some only want to be a sojourner. <clears throat> Secondly, there are students. Now, students are a little bit different than sojourners because students do want more than just traveling with you. Students want your head. A student is someone that wants what you know. They, 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 they see something in you that they really want, and they want that information. Students are great. Students will come, and they'll, 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 they'll come to the class. They'll amen you. They'll, they'll take what you're giving them. They'll put it into practice. They'll stick around longer than sojourners, but students still usually have a graduation point. Now, they're not just jumping off the back of the bus like sojourners do. Sojourners come into the church and sit near the back and watch and, you know, clap for a little bit, and then one Sunday, whoop, they're gone, you know, and <clears throat> usually, you know, God told them to go. At least that's their story. The students are different. Students will be around. Students will be there. Remember, students have graduation. Some students are going to graduate when they're in the eighth grade, twelfth grade, four years of college, maybe maybe master's degree and doctor's degree. But sooner or later, you're not going to be a student forever. Students will will leave you, but students want more than your hands. Students also want your head. They want what you have. So you give them your head. You tell them what to think. Now listen, <clears throat> I don't give my head to sojourners. Basically, it's like putting your pearls before swine, as Jesus said. Uh, don't waste your time trying to counsel sojourners. They, they won't do it. Don't waste your time giving them their opinion. They won't do it. They don't want it. You preach and preach and preach and preach and tell them and tell them and tell them and tell them and they just, oh, in this ear, out that ear, they're gone. It's really frustrating, let alone giving them your heart. Even your head frustrates them when you're giving them good knowledge and good, good advice and they just don't take it. Students are different, though. Students will take your advice. You'll have an impact on students. You really will. You'll have an impact. They'll, they'll listen to what you say and they'll do what you say. But then you have sons. <clears throat> sons, and, and again, that includes daughters. It's just that daughters doesn't start with an S. You know, students, sojourners and sons, a little easier to remember. They all start with S. What, what, what do sons? What do sons want? Sons get your heart. Sons get your heart. Sojourners don't get your heart. Students don't get your heart. Sons get your heart. Think about a son and daughter. They're rare. They're, of all the thousands of people that Paul ministered to towards the end of his life, he said, they've all forsaken me. In fact, he said, everybody, I think it was, he said in, Mass uh, in Asia, everyone in Asia has forsaken me at the end of his life. Can you imagine? Asia is where Ephesus was. He spent three years in Ephesus and did all those great miracles. They've all forsaken him. Only just a few, Luke, Timothy, Titus. I mean, there were just a few sons of the years of public ministry that Paul spent, of the thousands of people that he ministered to. He could probably count on one hand the number of sons because these sons will stick with you. And I tell you, that's where you want your heart to be. Now, sons will get your hands, sons will get your head, but they also get your heart. And I want to tell you, uh, from one apostolic leader to another, uh, no matter what kind of assignment that you have, if you're a leader in the church, your heart is valuable. Satan wants to hinder your heart and callous your heart. And the way that he does that is you're giving your heart to too many people. You give your heart to sons. You discern who the sons are. Reserve your heart for them. And when you do, you'll have healthy hands, a healthy head, and a healthy heart. And you'll have a long and fruitful ministry.